Happy Monday! I am here with the wonderful Audrey Scott Williams. Happy Monday Thank to you. Thank you so much. Happy Monday to you. Thank yeah. you. And Audrey is part of the 13 Moonwalk for Peace group who are walking across America, That's right. sp spreading the message of peace mm -hmm. and the message that peace is a verb. That's right. And uh, peace is what we do. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what we often communicate on this YouTube channel, and um, I was very fascinated with your articulation of how what we need to do is, is change our stories, our personal stories, mm -hmm. and our cultural stories yeah. to more peaceful stories, because perhaps we're right now acting out a story where we always fight each other, but right. we could just kind of change the script and uh, so you want to share a little sure. bit about it? You know, I think uh, whether it's on a personal level, as you said, or looking at it from a cultural perspective, even a national perspective, yeah. you know, we get locked into these stories that are built on, on, on so many years of sometimes, you know, a nation could be hundreds or thousands of years, mm -hmm. uh, but an individual could be our lifetime. And a lot of these stories are the things that keep us separate. Mm -hmm. You know, gives us this sense that I'm better than you because, mm -hmm. you know, or you you might be better than me because. So mm -hmm. then I'm kind of in this oppressed, subjective kind of role. Yeah. And, but, you know, I think there's this thing that happens, you know, especially right now, is, you know, our stories have run out. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. story, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And so if we're really going to bring about peace, if we're really going to create an environment that allows healing, then we have to begin to separate ourselves from those old stories mm -hmm. to discover, okay, now if the slate were clean, what would my story be? Mm -hmm. So in one story, you're kind of living out all the elements. In another story, now we have the opportunity to create the elements. Mm -hmm. So we move from a space of locked in, you know, to a system that's already kind of set and it has its place for us, uh -huh. but all of a sudden now we can create. Wow. You know, we can dance, we can, we can love, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can connect intimately mm -hmm. in a way that then allows us to co-create mm -hmm. what it means to be at peace. What does the new community look like? What does our relationship now look like with Mother Earth mm -hmm. and with each other and with ourselves? Yeah. yeah. That is a beautiful articulation of it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. You're welcome. Um, well, what do you think is like a, a practical sort of thing that people could do as like their homework, you know? Like if I was, if you could advise me to try one thing tomorrow or the next day, what would that be? Yeah. I think the first thing is recognizing our story. Mm -hmm. You know, we're used to looking at things that don't work in our lives as sort of separate, you mm -hmm. know, like, like there's, there's this thing that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is that the history of our story really kind of programs us for the very events that happen in our lives that are dis-ease, that create dis-ease and mm -hmm. discomfort. So the first thing is to recognize that I have a story and what is it? And how do I as a character play out in my own story, uh -huh. right? So that takes sometimes a little journaling. Mm -hmm. It takes, you know, getting up in the morning, writing, you know, sort of a free flow to try to really begin to look at what's my story. And then look at, well, what's my family story? Mm -hmm. How is that holding me hostage? How is it empowering me? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as we make this, this shift to a new story, we don't want to just throw out everything. We want to take those things that really are the elements that empower us to be mm -hmm. the best of who we are. So once we have a good idea of our story, the next thing is to begin to recognize, as I said a moment ago, how our story has created a pattern for us. Mm -hmm. And then number three is ask yourself a simple question. Is my story leading me to where I want to be? Mm -hmm. or to whom I want to be. You know, who do I want to be, and is my story going to get me there? Mm -hmm. Once you're clear on all that, then really the shift can happen like that. Wow. Because if the answer is no, then we have a choice. Mm -hmm. And only at that point do we have a choice, right? Because mm -hmm. you can't have a choice if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. 
So only in that moment then do we have a choice. And in that moment of choice, we can choose to go to the higher ground, creating, a, a, allowing ourselves to grow into a new story, clearly being aware of where the pitfalls may be, because you're not just going to end all the things just because all of a sudden now you've got a new story. So you know where your pitfalls are going to be, but now you have a sense of, well, if I really want to create a different outcome, I can do something different. Yeah. You know? I maybe can pay attention to this voice that's been resonating in me, telling me to go this path mm -hmm. that before didn't fit my story, so I had to lock it out. I see. All right, so those are the three things or four things that I would look at immediately. Well, that's And get help. Mm -hmm. And when I say get help, I mean, I think right now is not a time for the individual concept of mm -hmm. who we are. It doesn't work, it's played out. Mm -hmm. So we now are, you know, we're part of what I call crystal clusters. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of us are seeking each other and will find each other. So as you begin this process, it's really important to begin to pay attention. Who are the people that really resonate at the same frequency? Mm -hmm. You know, who are the people that when you're around them, you feel, wow, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And who are the people that are around, that you may be around, but after five minutes, you're like, so like, who, you know, just this torn. Drain. Yeah, yeah, drain, yeah. you know? And so then that's a clue to how to bring the people into your life and how you attach with people now who can help you to evolve. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, one thing that just came to mind that I was doing with some friends in a little exercise recently was in order for us to try and see our own stories and our cultural stories, we had we um, one person pretended they were a visitor from an indigenous tribe that had never seen America before and they were here like, what is this green paper stuff? Why do you use this? You yeah. know, and the people were like, well, uh, we have to use this to get food. And like when people were just tr starting to explain these stories, th we, we, people were like, wow, it really is crazy all yeah. the stuff we're doing yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. But we're like the actors on stage. We don't even notice that exactly. we're on stage. Exactly. So. Yeah. So the goal is to identify our own stories so that we can step back from them mm -hmm. and then decide to change it in whatever way we want. And get people, uh, and align ourselves with people in our lives who are affirming mm -hmm. us in the space that we are. Mm -hmm. You know, not so much concerned about where we come from, but in the space that we are and can see our potential. Because mm -hmm. then together we're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's important. For us, it sounds so simple, but it's so crucial mm -hmm. because I think if ever we, you know, all the things we've been involved in since we've gotten here, mm -hmm. right, um, say the same thing. If ever there was a time in the history of humanity for us to be able to make an amazing shift into this prophesied age of enlightenment, mm -hmm. this is it. Mm -hmm. So why hold back now? Yeah. You know, why hold back now? Go for it. You know, go for that opportunity to live a fully expressed life in the sense of the power and presence that's in you. It's in all of us. Mm -hmm. It's not out there. Mm -hmm. There's no being going to come down and give it to us. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and so, you know, as we slip into this heart space, mm -hmm. you know, and begin to look at things when we make choices, is this a good choice? A simple question. Is it a good choice for me? Would it be a good choice for my child? Would it be a good choice for my grandchild? And on yeah. and on, you know, like the Native Americans say, seven generations out. Begin to think about those things as we make choices. Would we then be fracking, you know? <laughs> Would we be having oil spills and creating environments that can allow that? Would we be building nuclear pl power plants around the world? Yeah. yeah. Would we be holding people oppressed and locked into, you know, genocidal situations? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. It's the madness of our history. Mm -hmm. But who are we? We're peaceful people deep down, I believe. With we the just power and potential to shift that story anytime. Exactly. Anytime. Well, let's make the shift. Mm -hmm. The shift is about to hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, all right, and shift happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you Audrey. Oh. Mm -hmm. And. We'll post a link to the 13 Moonwalk for Peace website there 
doing beautiful things every single day. So. Absolutely, and I have to say, it's young people like you, and I can say young because I'm a grandma, okay? okay? So it's young people like you that give me the drive to continue to do these walks and to show up, you know, wherever it is that we're called. Mm -hmm. And I think I can speak for the team when I say that, that it's because we see, mm -hmm. you know, you are affirming mm -hmm. what I know in my heart. So when something shows up that affirms what you know in your heart, it gives you the fuel to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I thank you. Thank you. Well, peace and love to everyone. Yes.